Hello folks, it's my Kaylee Seven here. I just got a haircut. And now I'm headed home. Well not home, I'm headed back to my office. Because it's lunch time. I'm going to take the back way back because uh, I didn't have my camera on and of course that's when the interesting stuff happens so I was on a road kind of like this back there going through downtown is the main road I think it's Main Street actually and uh, somebody in an SUV behind me decides, oh, that, you know, this single lane is actually a double lane because that guy's on a motorcycle. So I'm just going to pass this guy on the right. So, of course, I laid on the horn, and I'm looking at the lady, you know, to my right, using bad language that she couldn't hear because I'm inside my helmet. What is going on here? See, i got to be careful because I don't know what you're doing. Okay. Oh, pretty, pretty. And uh, just going into town, I noticed there was a, a huge accident that happened right as I was going. I didn't see it happen, but I was there like a second after. And so it was all this traffic and people merging, not knowing where they're going. It was all confusion and terribleness. And so. I thought, this is bad. Lots of people, people forget how to drive. And then that lady decides, yeah, this single lane is actually a double lane. I can pass on the right. So that's why I'm taking the back way. Try to avoid these people. Got to watch your mirrors like a hog around here, you know what I mean? Nowadays. As you can see, I'm on my gold wing. For those of you who, you know, miss my gold wing, this is my gold wing. I don't always ride the Kawasaki. I was just riding, you know, new toy and getting used to the bike and breaking the bike in. I still have a long ways to go before I'm at 600 miles. At about... Uh, 350 miles left until I can get that oil service done and then rip roar and have fun I'm in no hurry just gonna enjoy so uh, while I'm thinking about it let's do a comparison between the Kawasaki ZH2 for those of you who are uh, international folks, the Kawasaki ZH2 SE Special Edition with the electronically adjustable suspension, KECS it's called, and sky, Skyhook technology compared to this. Okay, well, first off, it's apples and oranges. They are both designed for different purposes. So you cannot really say that one is better than the other uh, in all regards. But I will just tell you my, my views on the, the differences between these two bikes now that I own both. Uh, the weight difference is definitely apparent. This is a heavier bike and it does not move as quickly or as nimbly as the other bike because this is 834 pounds and that bike is 531 pounds plus me even though this bike is very nimble it's not as nimble as the the ZH2 
And this bike is very quick off the line, but it's not anywhere near as quick off the line as the ZH2. And it's not supposed to be. This is a touring bike. And the ZH2 is a naked bike, which is uh, more, you know, just for street riding, short rides, fun rides, track, which is not a track bike. I know, I know, I know, but that kind of thing, you know, you're, you're not going to go on a 6,260 mile grand tour on the back of a Kawasaki ZH2. It's just not going to happen. I mean, you can, <laughs> but I don't think you want to have a... Uh, I think I don't think you're going to have a good time. Let's just put it that way. Comfort-wise, I have to get a, a padded seat for the Kawasaki because that's just that seat is is a, it looks like a seat, but it's not really a seat. So I'll have to buy some kind of a add-on. So there's really no comparison when it comes to comfort. Oh, that bike is fine, but it's not for long tours. This bike is just, you're laid back, relaxed. I got my little highway pegs. I can stick my feet out and enjoy myself. More laid back, but it can also get up and go. This bike is great that way. And now the weight difference, uh, not just is, it's not just in how much the bike weighs. It's also in uh, the placement of the weight. So the weight on this bike is really down low, which makes uh, makes it feel lighter when you're riding it, and it makes cornering a little bit different. I noticed that when I'm cornering on this bike, I, I can kind of use my lower body to move the bike around. On the ZH2, the weight is up higher. So there's just a different way you're moving your body. You have to kind of lean your, bo your body out more. You could do that on this, but on that, it's, it's just, it's more effective. It responds better to the higher up movement than the down low movement. In terms of... Uh, the throttle response, I gotta say, uh, I really didn't realize how much I missed having a clutch until I started riding a bike with a clutch again. When you're in the slow maneuvers, it's just so much more intuitive to me to be able to feather the clutch, use that friction zone for exactly the amount of power that you want when you're doing those slow speed maneuvers and then you can always pull in the clutch and you never have to worry about the bike getting away from you. Or on this bike, when you're in drive, you're in drive. And uh, if you if you twist the throttle at the wrong moment, you know, you could have a bad day. It almost happened on the big trip with Moose up in Michigan. Uh, I was making one of them little tight U-turns and target locked on him and, and next thing you know the, uh, I meant to decrease throttle but I increased throttle and I grabbed the brake last second in the middle of the turn luckily I didn't go down and I didn't hit moose that's happened a few times so on this bike you really have to be cognizant of the position of the throttle and, and how you're turning it or holding it in those little tight slow maneuvers So I really do enjoy having that clutch again for that purpose and that purpose alone. Uh, this bike, when you're just going down the road, it's so much easier to not have a clutch. Like if, if this bike could grow a clutch for the, for the parking maneuvers, that would be wonderful. That would be the best of both worlds. But, uh, you know, I can, I can still do uh, really tight U-turns on this and on that. But just a different method that you have to employ, different approach to it. But they're both able to do the same thing. A 
one nice thing about the the automatic is I never have to worry about a missed shift like the other day I was shifting up and I have the the quick shift on the other bike and I was towing up and apparently I towed into neutral and so you know the throttle I'm revving is like god damn it on this bike I will never tow up into neutral by accident let's put it that way <laughs> See, now I'm used to leaning farther over on the Kawasaki, and so I'm scraping again. As I, every time I go between bikes, my brain has to reset as to where the lean points are. Do I love this bike any less because I have that Kawasaki? Absolutely not. This bike is still awesome. It's my main bike. Kawasaki is my, you know, shit and git type bike. And I know, be careful Mike, don't die. I know, I know, I know, I know. Don't worry. The weight of this bike is definitely apparent when you're in really tight turns. It just starts to throw you toward the outside of the curve more. Uh, the other bike, the Kawasaki, I mean, you could just, it's like you're on a rail. You just corner in and just boom, right there. When you're expecting to have that little bit of a, uh, you're moving outside the curve. No, no, this is just right there. So uh, it'll take some more learning, definitely. I imagine that the other bike will now make me corner more on this and more aggressively on this. We'll see. <laughs> uh, Paul Fosbury noticed that I'm very confident in my, you know, extreme leaning. And he recalls that he had a, a bike years ago that slid out on him and because the tires back then weren't as good as they are now. And he's never really trusted a bike like that since. And I totally understand. Plus he's, you know, 80. So you don't want to have a bad day when you're 80. But, um, the tires on both bikes are wonderful and you're able to really lean the bike over and not have to worry about the tire not you know doing what it's supposed to do of course you know you have to be aware of the road conditions you want to you know a nice dry road that's well paved you want warm tires you know that can grab the road the way they're supposed to you don't want to lean the bike too far over all that stuff The other thing too is the turn signals. I, I keep forgetting. You gotta really be aware of your turn signals on that Kawasaki. You gotta be right on it. Because, you know, I get used to this bike, it cancels after seven seconds or eight seconds. So for this bike, I'm constantly re establishing the turn signals. And on the other bike, I have to constantly turn off the turn signals. So the challenge of going from one to the other and remembering how each one operates differently, that, that's a, a thing your brain really has to get used to. I suppose this is a good thing, right? Keeps you keeps your brain active and nimble. Throw it some curves every now and again. Now I haven't really gunned it on on the ZH2 yet because you know I'm still in the break-in period I can go over 6,000 rpm so I did a little bit I was on the way home on a ride the other day I didn't have the camera on because uh, my my Cena battery went low 
So I turned off all my cameras and I'm heading home and I can see off on the left side, I can see this dark sky. And it was moving that away. And I knew that it was going to intersect where I was going. So I had to go fast to, to get home before it hit. Big old thunderstorm with, you know, lightning and thunder and rain and maybe hail, I don't know. So uh, here I am on this back road, kind of like a road like this, sort of. Trying to, you know, shit and get to get home. And I ended up passing, uh, it was a passing zone. So I had the broken line, I could pass, and I passed two cars. Now, I was in, I believe, fourth gear, and I just gunned it. And I was, I went from like 49 miles an hour to 87 miles an hour in a heartbeat. Past those two things like they were standing still. And, you know, it is possible that the, the second car that I passed might have been uh, going to, you know, make a left all of a sudden into a driveway. But I didn't see any driveways coming up. I, they, it just seemed to me like they were going straight. And I felt reasonably confident, so I did it. But then I get back down to, you know, reasonable speed. And then around the bend, I see these lights flashing fire truck lights and then ambulance lights and then cop lights I'm like what the hell is this so as I come down the hill into the right hand corner there's a uh, two fire trucks two ambulances and two cop cars and they're at the scene of a wreck somebody in a Volkswagen Tiguan an older model coming the other way had flipped it was on the other side of the road flipped upside down in the ditch and of course the guy in front of me was a volunteer firefighter so he wanted to stop and talk to each person directing traffic individually hey how's it going so he he passed the first guy he'd stop again talk to the second guy stop again talk to the third guy like god i'm trying to get home the rain's gonna get me and then the rest of the way home i was stuck behind a line of like 10 or 11 cars so there's no way i could pass not safely, not not anywhere near legally, so I didn't. I just took my lumps. And the rain did get me, but only for the last two miles. So I was okay. Of course, when it's, you know, weekend and you can ride, it's raining. And then when it's weekday and you can't really ride, it's perfectly sunny and dry. Because that's how the universe does you. And I will say this as a final thought on the difference between these two bikes. I think this bike is more difficult or less likely to be stolen. Sure, if I went to a bike rally or something, you know, a place where there's all these bikers and stuff, Myrtle Beach, Bike Week or whatever, then I think this bike would be, you know, a stealable type bike. But when I'm going to school every day and parking this in the parking lot there, I don't think anybody's going to steal this bike. It's big, it's heavy, there's a lot of people around. But that Kawasaki, you know, I don't know. I think that's a much bigger prize for, for the thieves. And so I do not ride the Kawasaki to school. I don't want to come out and find it gone. And I can't chain it down to anything. So I just figure, you know what? Discretion is the better part of valor, and so that's why I'm on this bike. I'm going to do a little bit of practice here while I'm going back to work. in my feet. Lay on the throttle. Look into your turn. I'm scraping like a bastard.
Oh, 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 oh. That was a bad one. Let's try this again. A little bit too hot. Yeah, that's not too bad. It looked too late. I'm not thinking. I'm thinking about work. Focus, Mike, focus. There you go. One more. 